Hey there. Are you a podcaster looking to maximize the number of people who discover and engage with your podcast? If so, you should be repurposing your content onto YouTube. Today, I'll be sharing the reasons why you should repurpose your content onto YouTube, and most importantly, how to do that. I found a easy, quick, and most importantly, free way, and I'm excited to share that with you guys today. First, let's answer why you should be repurposing your content onto YouTube. YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world. And in the US, about 73% of people are YouTube users. Whereas for podcast listeners, that's about 37% according to Statista. So there's a higher, much higher chance you'll be discovered on YouTube than you will be on podcasts. Another reason on YouTube, as you know, they provide recommendations based on your customized preferences or videos you've watched in the past. If you go on Apple Podcasts, it doesn't do that. The highest chance is you might be featured on new podcasts or podcasts of the week. But other than that, they don't customize it towards people's preferences. So that means people are not able to discover your podcast, even though they could be potential listeners. Let's talk about engagement. On YouTube, you know it's very easy to write a comment and to share that video with a friend. Whereas on podcasts, especially something like Apple Podcast, you don't have a way to leave a comment on the actual podcast. There's been recent apps such as Breaker, which allows you to do that. Podcasts are still more listened on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify today, which don't allow those elements. So if you want people to engage with your podcast directly, uh, YouTube reviews and comments allow that. So I know when I uploaded my podcast, it was super annoying to have five separate links, one for Spotify, one for Apple, one for Google, another for Stitcher, another for SoundCloud. Everyone has YouTube. Okay, maybe not everyone, but more people have YouTube than are on those other fragmented uh, surfaces. So for example, some people who have an iPhone might not be able to use Google Podcast and vice versa. Whereas on YouTube, it's compatible on any platform and high chance that your user has YouTube on their phone. Now that maybe I've convinced you, let's talk about how. So there's two options, probably more. The first one, you can do what Joe Rogan does, which is he records in his studio the video of him and his interview guest. But many of you are doing podcasts because you don't want to turn on your video and maybe you're camera shy like me. So the second option is to repurpose your audio file into a video file. And today I'm going to show you how using an app called headliner.app. So I recently found this in my early beginnings of podcast journey, and I'm so psyched to share with you guys the workflow today. First, I want to show you what the end product looks like. Here it is on YouTube. I'll play the video. Across and you'll see here you have the wavelength forms making the video a bit more dynamic than just a static image and text. Let's dive in. So I'm using headliner.app and look at this website. It's just so well designed, beautiful, makes you want to use it. I'm already logged in. So if you don't have an account, feel free to register really quick. Just type in your email. So right now I'm on my dashboard. I would click full episode. So these are for episodes that are up to two hours of audio and they translate it into video for YouTube, Vimeo, anything. I click that. Then I'm asked to choose a file. I go into my podcast folder and for my new Emerging Markets Tech Startups podcast, I'm going to choose the South Africa episode. So audio selected. I click next. Choose landscape ratio. I would choose, yes, I would choose landscape ratio because that says best for YouTube and websites. Next. Now this is the fun part. Headliner.app does a great job of making beautiful designs. So what it does is it takes your podcast audio file and makes it into a YouTube video with wavelengths to make it still seem interactive. So that is the hack here that I love using. So you go into view templates and they allow you to choose from some awesome looking templates. So this one I really like. You would put your podcast banner or cover art here 
and then you can choose the different waveforms. So let's say I want this one. This one looks kind of cool and techy. And you can see at the bottom, top left here, it also shows listen to this episode on Apple Podcasts. What else? Let's play around. You can customize the image. And here I would suggest putting your cover art. So you can replace. So I go into my cover art folder and I choose my Emerging Markets Tech Startups Podcast cover art. And here you see Nifty on the left. You can change the size of that. So let's say I want to make it bigger. Great. So that looks awesome already. I can even ch change the text to say, so this episode was about South Africa. So I'm going to say how payments changed inequality. Okay, so see there's a typo. So I save that. Voila. Let's go over into the background. So I love this color already, this bluish purple but I can even customize that differently if I wanted a yellow hue to match my cover art. So here, wow, look at that. It looks great. The end result. Now I export it. And the unfortunate thing, the headliner doesn't provide immediate videos. So you'll see towards the end, they tell you to wait up to an hour and 15 minutes and they will email you the video. We'll email your video soon. It should take about an hour and 13 minutes. In the meanwhile, I'm going to show you how you can set an automated process so that next time when you upload your podcast onto a hub like Anchor, it automatically happen through Headliner. Let's go to automations. You can see I have mine already set up, but let me show you what the flow is like for setting up a new one. You click the plus sign, then you enter your podcast name. So here, since my podcast is already live, I'm going to do a search. Startups. And here, you'll see mine pop up. And if you've already uploaded on for a couple of days, it'll show up on this list. You select the language. Select the video type, so mine are full length videos, not short videos. Next, choose your aspect ratio. Choose a template you would like to use consistently. Let's go with this one. In the bottom right here, you can't see it, but it says start. And voila. So it says check your inbox soon. We'll email your first video. And this is the process that from every time on you upload your podcast, your new podcast episode, it would send you an automated email. And sometimes that can take up to a day or a couple of hours, but no worries. It will for sure get sent to your inbox. I'll sh show you an example here. So my video has been sent to my email address. You hit go to video, preparing download, and you can even send it to YouTube directly. So if you click that button, it'll tell you to sign in and connect your YouTube account. And it would give you an option to put in your title, your description, and would automatically upload it onto YouTube. Might take a couple hours as well. Here, let's take a look at the finished product. And that looks great. Well, to me, who doesn't have too much of a design background. And that was quite easy as well. The final product onto YouTube. You can tell my whole episode was loaded all 36 minutes. Let's play it and see what it looks like. This is the wavelength forms, so it makes it a bit dynamic. Oop. And there you have it. So this is a easy, free, and quick way to turn your podcast episodes into a video file where you would get much more discoverability onto YouTube. So this eases the process a ton because otherwise you'd have to find another software to transition audio files into video. You would have to do a bunch of design to figure out the right look and feel. And with headliner.app, you're able to do that flow all within 15 minutes. So let me know what other questions you guys might have and feel free to share other tips you guys have picked up in podcasting. Thank you.